Hey, welcome back to another episode of Orwell's Interceptors. I've got a, an interesting conundrum, and it's kind of the reason I have not really even started this project yet, because the first thing I wanted to do was just get the wheels, tires, and all of that assembled. i got three things I can't quite figure out on this wheel. I've been thinking about it for like a month, and I'm just going to start pushing ahead. The first thing is that these wheels are recently powder-coated, so they're blasted and then powder-coated. And if you can hear that, there is some blasting media inside of this wheel. Now, I have tried everything to get that out. If you could think of it, I've tried it. Maybe you could think of something I haven't tried, but vacuum, compressed air, everything, hook shop back up to here, compressed air through there, fit a long hose onto a vacuum, try to blow into all these recesses. Now, there's six of these recesses for every one of the rotor bolts. They must be congregating in there. So then I just decided to get nuclear on it, this past weekend in what I thought would have to work. I just soaked five rags worth in air, uh, air filter oil and just shoved them all in there and just started spraying compressed air all around. And I was still getting none of these flex to come out. I brought it into work, had everybody give it a shot. Everybody's trying their best things. Nobody could figure out how to get it out. So then I just got super nuclear. I filled the damn wheel with gear oil because I figured if I can fill it with gear oil, I can clump some of that stuff together, put in as many rags as possible, pull all of that out, see if I can get the stuff out. And then I go into my bathtub, soak it, just try to get all of it out and still, I cannot get it out. So what I'm gonna do is just slap a maraca sticker on it. And now I've got my V4 maraca because quite frankly, I can't figure it out. If the flex are in these spots right here and there is few as I think that there are just making some noise, I don't think it's going to be a big impact on the balance of the wheel. That was my original thought. I don't know what else to do, so I'm moving on. So then I decided I was going to press in the bearings. So to press in the bearings, you want to do them in sequence. It's, uh, the manual says you want to do the right-hand side first because you're going to press the right-hand side in, then you're going to put this distance collar in, and then set the other side to it. I know that this is the right-hand side because the speedo side is on the left. So when I went to do that, new bearings, put a bearing here. <laughs> I should need to press that bearing in. I have never seen a bearing just fall in, which is what just happened. So essentially, I have lost my interference fit on that bearing. I can't get it out that last little bit, but I've pressed 10 bearings into my SV wheels just recently. I feel like I have an idea on how to do it, um, but there should be an interference fit here. So I panicked, called a coworker because I assumed that my wheels were trashed or that what I would need to do is find somebody to bore. Oh, I wouldn't even be able to do it on this side is to bore out the hub an additional one millimeter, find a bearing with the same inner diameter and one millimeter bigger outer diameter and then press those in. And then that would be able to work. I need to get that thing out. Okay, so called a coworker, started panicking. We're trying to go through a bunch of ideas. He called one of his racing buddies who races boats and he said, nope, there is something for you. This exists, you're not the first person with this problem. He recommended to go out and find some green Loctite. Now there's like three different types of green Loctite. I used some, I, I took a guess that this is the one I want. This one operates up to 180C. There's no way that these bearings are gonna get to 180C without something else breaking. So what I'm going to do this retaining compound this is much different than the thread locker they sell. This retaining compound is basically going to be applied to the outside of the bearing and then the inside of the hub. I should also mention this did not get blasted. I can see it would have like a matte finish to it. It did not get blasted, so they didn't take material out. So I'm wondering if the baking process of curing this powder coat somehow expanded this wheel or maybe it was just worn and I would have found that out whether or not, um, I ended up, uh, you know, getting them powder coated or not. I did also check it with the old bearings. It's not just this bearing. The old bearing falls right into it too. So it's, it's an issue with the hub. So anyway, I will coat the outside of this bearing and I will coat the inside of this hub. And then I will press this down and I will essentially let it glue itself in there. And this should take up to like four thousandths of an inch. And I should have a glued in bearing, which will then allow me to come over to this other side, put in my spacer, press in my other bearing in which I'm also going to glue it in. 
I guess some auto manufacturers use green Loctite on their automobiles right out of the factory. I've never heard of this before, and there isn't too much information about it, but that's what it's for. So I will be trying that out. I won't know if it works until I ride the bike. So I can't give you any indication of whether it's not gonna work or if it's gonna work. Then the last thing, I was gonna put some, obviously I'm gonna put some 90 degrees uh, valve stems on it. So if it was this side, chains on this side, so I would want it off to the right, I'd like to put a nice 90 degree. Well, with the wheel shape on this, this 90 degree isn't going to work because of how deep that recess is in there. So you put this here and then, nope, that's not gonna hold air. So no 90 degrees for me. I could probably find a different style that'll work. This style works fine on my SV wheels. Instead, I'll have to get some. I'm just gonna do this for now. I'll just put some of the cheap ones back on. And then the next time that I change tires, these tires only have like 500 miles on, so I'm gonna put those back on. But the next time I put BT40, well, those are 45s, I'll be putting BT46s on next time. Next time I have to do that, I will revisit the 90 degree stem. So that is why I haven't accomplished anything about, you know, on putting this interceptor back together. I wish I'd accomplished more. I wish I had something to show. I wish I'd started assembling the frame that I still have hidden over there and then put it around that motor. But this is <laughs> what I've been working on. So yeah, that's, that's all I got for now. I'm gonna figure this out and then I'm gonna start assembling the motorcycle. Ah, uh, you watched Fart, thanks for watching. All right, I guess I should probably actually show the actual application of it. It's kind of a dick move for me not to do that. All right, so now we've got the rear wheel here because I already did the front. Uh, same idea, right side's going in first because we're going to set the left to the right. There's actually three bearings on the right because one of them goes into that hub piece that comes on with the chain that holds onto the cush drive, but this one's going to get pushed all the way down. So, got my green Loctite. I'm using 680, so I'm going to put some in here. And I'm gonna come at it with a paintbrush to put it smoothly. These, I hadn't press fit to see if the same thing's gonna happen, but you know what? I'm doing it on both sides. So, all right, we got that. And then I'm gonna do it with the bearing itself. Actually, I'm gonna do that after I smooth this out. This one's gonna go all the way in. And you want to move quick with this because it sets fairly quick and it is anaerobic which means it does not need oxygen to set and that's good because there shouldn't be any oxygen because it's going to be such such a tight fit i'll set that there now we need this paintbrush I wouldn't expect to be able to use this paintbrush again when you're done. All right, bearing time. I think this is like a 46 or something. I don't know, I got a 45 press on it, which means I'm not going to hit the inner race. Don't want to hit the inner race, don't want to hit that sealed part. Just want to be hitting the outer race. That's it. Want to get it started to make sure I'm going in right, and then I will hit it all the way down until I hear the pitch change. Oh, I want to get straight. Not quite straight yet. Close. Now we're ready to go home. Certainly makes it harder to push it in. Pitch change just now, because I did. 
My ears are ringing a bit. I usually put earplugs in for this part. Just want to make sure. Yeah, that's all the way down. Okay. Good, I didn't damage anything on the way in. All right, now if you watch this far, thanks for watching. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta wipe that up. And then, I don't think this one had the same interference issues that the other one did. It might've just been the front wheel, but I still, I'm gonna do it on both sides. Uh, because everything is an experiment for me at this point, because I don't know what I'm doing. So I might as well learn something, because I don't know anything about green Loctite. Okay, now if you watch this far, thanks for watching.